Hey, what's up everybody? I have a belt that I'm working on right here that I need to get buck stitch. And so I wanted to make a video talking a little bit about buck stitching and showing you kind of my process of how I go about doing it and explain it a little bit more and share a few tips that I've learned over the past couple of years. So let's get right on into it. Now, if you don't know what buck stitching is, it's a lacing technique and there's a couple ways to go about it, but my preferred method is where you end up with the final result looking like this, this little diamond weave with the lace around the border of the project, which would be there instead of a stitch line. And some people still run stitch lines through a sewing machine or hand stitch it and leave room for buck stitching as well. But when I buck stitch, I prefer to just buck stitch. I don't usually do the sewing machine, but again, that's just my personal preference. This is the final result. It's very appealing to the eyes. There's a lot of people that say that it's kind of an old school look or an old school technique, but I do a lot of buck stitching. I get a lot of orders for buck stitch belts. And so when I first started doing leather work, I was always on YouTube, like I was for everything, looking for videos and how to's. And so I figured that I would go ahead and make this video to hopefully try to help others out and uh, make the process a little bit easier learning. And like I said, share some tips that I've learned over the past couple of years. Okay, so here's the belt that I'm working on. Now, as you can see, buck stitching is usually one of the very last steps in my process. This belt has already been tooled, finished, the edges have been slicked and dyed, and so now I would typically buck stitch it. And like I said, it's one of the last things that I do. Um, and as you can see on this, there's a little bitty line scribed in the border of this belt, and that's typically where you would stitch it regularly through a sewing machine or hand stitch it, however you wanna go about doing it. And I personally, Usually if I'm gonna run a belt or any project through a sewing machine, I like to take my stitch groover and groove a line there. But if I'm gonna be buck stitching, I don't like to groove that line because especially on a natural colored belt like this, you can see where that groove is in between. Right here, you'd be able to see. And I think I actually might've even grooved this checkbook cover whenever I did it. But you can see the stitch groove line and I don't like that. And so, I prefer to just take my wing dividers or my compass and wherever I would run my stitch line typically, I set that. Usually it's an eighth of an inch in on my belts. My belts are typically around a quarter of an inch thick. I make them out of nine, 10 ounce leather for the main body and then I line them with three, four. So roughly an eighth of an inch in is where I run my stitches. So I would just take my wing dividers, set it at that distance. And then before I do any drawing or tooling or anything, I like to just kind of scribe a line and it usually stays throughout the entire process. And that's what my guideline is going to be while I'm buck stitching. So this guideline is where I'm going to line my chisel up when I punch the holes and that's where the lacing is going to go. So when it comes to the actual lace that we're going to use, there's a lot of options out there. And again, much like almost everything in leather work, it's personal preference. But for me, I like to use kangaroo lace. Kangaroo lace can sometimes be hard to come by, but I think it is a lot stronger and it makes the process of buck stitching a lot easier than if you were using traditional cowhide or calf lace or whatever else. In my experience, kangaroo lace is the best product to use for buck stitching. It lasts longer, it holds up well. And when I first started buck stitching, I was just using the regular cowhide lace or whatever it is. And I kept having, when I was pulling the lace through the holes, I kept having my lace snap. And I don't know if it was just because I was pulling so hard, but I typically like to pull my lace pretty tight. And so I was having to splice my lacing all on the back side of this belt, and I did not like that. And so I started using kangaroo lace, and I haven't looked back. Like I said, it can be kind of hard to find at times because I think a lot more people are starting to use it. But it's definitely my preferred method. This lace that I'm using right here is white kangaroo lace, and it is an eighth of an inch wide. That's usually what I do. I like the size of it. Um, compared to the border of my belts or any other of my projects. And so that's what I prefer to use. So obviously in order to run the lace through this belt and buck stitch it, you need holes. And now they do make needles that you can put in certain sewing machines nowadays that you can actually run your project through the sewing machine like you would if you were stitching it with thread, but it just has a needle, a buck stitching needle that leaves those holes for you. Now, I don't have a sewing machine that is compatible with those needles, so I don't, I don't do that. Even if I did, I would personally be hesitant to use that just because I prefer to do everything by hand. It does take a lot longer, but I feel like I have a lot more control over the final product when I do everything by hand, and so that's just how I roll. Now, the chisels that I use are just these craft tools that I picked up from Tandy. They are very inexpensive. 
there are a lot higher quality chisels out on the market, but I've been using these for a while and I haven't had an issue with them. They don't stay crazy sharp, but they are sharp enough to get the job done for me. Uh, this particular one is an eighth of an inch. So what that means is these prongs right here are spaced an eighth of an inch apart. Now, earlier in the video, you heard me say that there are a few ways to go about buck stitching. They are, there are also chisels out on the line that are angled. And so instead of leaving straight holes along the border, like these will do, there would be angled slots. I personally don't like that look. It kind of makes it look flat. The lace look flat as it goes across rather than getting this diamond look, which is what I always go for. I think that looks a lot better, but again, it's personal preference. You can also buy these where there is, I don't know, seven or eight prongs on this to make the process a lot quicker. I honestly probably need to buy me some new chisels and get some longer ones because obviously when you're punching these holes, if you have something with more prongs, it's gonna go by a lot quicker. Okay, so I'm gonna show you most of the tools and materials that I think that you need to get this job done. You don't need a lot. Obviously you need your lace, you need your chisels to punch your holes. Almost everybody that does leather work has some sort of compass or wing dividers. Um, that is ideal in my opinion to run this line across it, but I don't guess you technically need it. You also need some type of awl. This is just, again, a cheap, inexpensive craft tool awl, a stitching awl, and that is what you're gonna use to open the holes up a little bit when you are going to run the lace through, and I'll show you that here in a little bit. You also need some type of mallet or maul. I'm gonna be using my big Berry King three pound maul, again, just to make the job a little bit easier punching holes. And uh, something else that's optional are these lacing needles. I don't like to use these needles. I will use them on certain projects, but more times than not, I don't use these needles. I just prefer to cut a point on the tip of the lace, and that's usually sufficient for me to run through the holes. This needle does make it a lot easier if you are working on projects where the holes might be hard to reach. You can actually bend the tips of these needles to get to hard to reach places, or if the material is hard to get through, there are certain things that you can buck stitch or do any type of lacing where you might not be able to get just the lace alone into the hole or where you need to get it. And so this needle can come in handy then. Like I said, I will use these sometimes, but more times than not, I prefer to just use the lace. And then you can actually, I've seen some people, when you cut the point on your lace right here, you can put super glue or some other type of strong adhesive on the tip of that and let it harden up. And that can almost act as a needle itself once that lace gets hard with that glue on it, it's a lot easier to go through the holes as well, so. Okay, you're ready to get started buck stitching your belt. So how much lace do you need? Now, generally, generally you're gonna need about double the length of the area that you're gonna be buck stitching to have enough lace to get the job done. So say you had a straight single row of buck stitching that's gonna be two feet long. Typically you'd need about four feet of lace to tackle that job. Uh, if you're doing very thin pieces of leather or other projects, then double the length might be a bit much. But in my opinion, it's always better to be safe than sorry because I personally absolutely hate splicing lace on the back of a project. I don't like the way it looks and it's just annoying to do. So it, this can be tricky on belts. It was tricky for me at first. Uh, it might seem stupid, but typically when you're laying out a belt, some people might think, okay, I'm gonna take the length of my belt and just go one, two, twice, that's enough material. But you gotta remember that on belts or any other projects that have a double side like this, you can't just go double the length of that. There's actually a double row, double row of lace, so you need to go twice the length on one side, but that's just one side, so then you need to go twice the length again for the other side. So technically you need to do the entire length of the belt four times. So as you can see, that's a lot of lace that it takes to get a belt done. And at the end, since this will stretch just a little bit, it might end up being a little bit much, but like I said, it's a lot better to be safe than sorry when it comes to buck stitching. So even though I don't use these needles very often, I'm still gonna go ahead and show you how to use them if that's gonna be your preferred method. As you can see on the opposite side of the point down here, there's an opening. You can pull that apart and that's where you're going to insert the lace. And you can see those little bitty prongs in there. Those are actually going to attach to the lace and help keep it secured in the needle. That way it doesn't, the lace doesn't pop off the needle while you're using it. So you're going to wanna open that up a little bit. Take your 
lace, stick it in there like that, and then crimp it down. I don't have my needle nose pliers with me right now or a hammer nearby, but you would typically take your needle nose pliers and crimp that down really tight or take a hammer and hammer it down. And like I said, those prongs that obviously haven't attached to the lace will be attached to the lace. And then your lace will just be inside the needle like so. And then you will stick the lace through the holes, pull it through, and it can make it easier on some projects, but I just, I don't know. I don't use them very often. If you're not gonna use the needles and go about it like I normally do, I just like to take some type of knife, this is just a rotary cutter, and make an easy point on the lace like that. And so that's what I use as my needle. And it is usually sufficient enough to get through the holes and not bind up eventually. This might start to wear down and bend and get weak like that. All you gotta do is cut that off and make another point and you're good to go. Another thing before we start punching the holes, I like to start buck stitching from the tip of the belt rather than starting at the fold end where the buckle attaches and then working my way around. I like to start at the tip. That way I can almost split the lace in half, if you will, and that way I'm not working with as much lace on either side. It'll be a lot easier to explain this when I start actually working on the belt and buck stitching it but it just seems like it makes it a lot easier because you're not dealing with all the lace working up one side and then down the other. So you're basically working with half the length of the lace on one side and then half the length on the other side and it just makes it a lot easier in my opinion. Regardless, I some people won't buck stitch all the way down through the fold right here. They'll end it up here and then stitch this, but I run my buck stitching all the way down through the fold and then I'll typically end it off back here somewhere that way, when I get finished and this folds and attaches to the buckle, that lace will be hidden on the back side underneath the fold in here somewhere. And that way it won't be messed with. It won't ever be hit or abrased or come loose or anything like that. I just feel like it's a little bit safer under there finishing it like that. And so it'll last a lot longer that way. If you're gonna be working on an English point belt like this, okay, let's go back to talking about the tip. If you're working with an English point like this, which is gonna be the more pointy, tip i like to start my holes where there's one on this side of the point and one on this side of the point it's not as big of an issue if you're working on a round tip belt like this but on an english point i like that it's more aesthetically pleasing to the eyes um, so that's just another thing to keep in mind okay so i've moved over to my tooling bench it's a little bit more sturdy i like to use it when i'm punching holes or tooling or anything like that i also got my granite block down and i you don't ever want to punch your chisels or anything like that straight into the granite or anything like that. You want it to be in some sort of cutting board or pound of a board. And so, just like I mentioned before, we're going to start here at the tip. And since this is a round tip, it's not as critical, but I'm still going to try to offset it straight from the center a little bit. But you line that up on this line like we mentioned right here, and then you just punch your hole through. Sorry if I'm shaking the camera, it's a little bit hard to do with this camera right in my face, but that was just my single chisel. And from there, I'll take this four prong and just kind of lay out where I think my next one needs to go. Put a little mark there. Come in with your chisel. Make sure it's lined up. Punch through. And then I'll make sure that I'm coming back this other way. Put a line there. And then we'll continue to do that all throughout the belt, all the way down. Now on a belt, it's not as critical when you get to where you're gonna end it and hide it. But on some projects, you wanna make sure that you are finishing with your lace going where one's coming in this and one's in, coming in this hole and it's both on the back side. Um, you can usually get away and hide it on a belt, but if you're not gonna be able to hide it and you want them to both finish on the back side, then you wanna make sure that you have an even number of holes punched. That is gonna ensure that when you finish your buck stitching, you're gonna be able to 
have the buck stitching going down in this hole and down in this hole and both sides are on the back there's not going to be one on the front so now that we've got this started i'm going to go ahead and work on punching the holes throughout this belt i'm probably going to switch the camera angle and have a more wide view of everything that's going on and it'll probably just be a sped up version because this does take a little bit of time Okay, now that we've got going a little bit, I thought of something that I might share with you. Uh, this is beeswax. It can be beneficial to dip your chisels, stitching awls, or anything like that into beeswax. You don't want to get it clumped up on there. But every now and then, once you start using it, dip it in there, and that will help it go in and out of the leather a lot easier. Another thing, as you can see, when I get going on a long run, you want to take this chisel and the easiest way to line it up with your line is to take this very end one right here and stick it in the last hole that you just got done punching and then lay the rest out. That's going to ensure that you continuously keep the same spacing and you don't say come out here and try to guess it and then accidentally have too wide of a space. You want to make sure that you stick that last prong in that last hole and then everything should still line up evenly. One more thing, you want to make sure that when you are putting this chisel on the leather and you're punching the holes, you want it to be straight up and down. You don't want it tilted forward or backward at all because if you do that, especially if you tilt it forward, that means those chisels are going down and could potentially bust out of the edge or be too high to the edge, close to the edge on the back side. And vice versa, if you hold it back like that, then it's going to be too far away from the edge. You want to try to keep it as vertical as you can. That way you get a clean hole that goes straight down through and they're both the same distance from the very end of the edge on the front and the back side. <laughs> guys we got all the holes punched as you can see there's a little bit of light because your holes need to go all the way through and you want it roughly to be the same distance that means that you were hitting your holes straight and not crooked but now that all the holes are punched through you're ready to start lacing this thing up so let's get that cut out and ready to go all right just like i said earlier you want double the length of the area that you're going to be bug stitching to get the distance of or the amount of lace that you need so, just like I showed you earlier, we're gonna go one, two, three, four. Cut that. This will be all of the lace that we use to buck stitch this belt. I got both ends of my lace right here pointed up, ready to go. And so now we're gonna start right here at the tip. And so now I'm gonna go ahead and insert the lace through the first hole and show you what I like to do from there. So I got one end of the lace right here and I'm just gonna stick it in this first hole like so. And then from here, what I like to do is pull the lace through the hole until we got about half the length of the lace on this side of the belt and the other half on this side. So we'll just start stripping that through. Okay, so as you can see, I got about half the length of the lace going through the back side of the belt and the other half on the front side. So what I'm going to do from here to make it a little bit easier on myself is take one side of this and just kind of coil it up and tie it up in a knot right here and let it sit there until I'm ready to do this other side of the belt. That way, I only have to deal with, like I said earlier, half the length of the entire piece of lace and I'm not pulling the entire sh however many feet through each individual hole. And it just makes it a little bit easier. Once we get to the end down here on the fold, we'll just leave the lace there, come back up to the 
start where this other piece is and make that other run on the other side. Okay, so we got this tied up back here, nothing crazy, just enough to keep it kind of out of the way. And I'm gonna go ahead and start this first run on the top side of this belt. So we're gonna go ahead and stick this lace right here into the next hole. And from here, it's pretty simple. We're just gonna pull that through. You wanna make sure that as you pull it through, you got it going in correctly where it's gonna lay down flat like this. When you pull that tight, you got your first little diamond weave right there. And so then we're gonna to come to the back side. First off, this is where this stitching all comes into play. These holes are open a little bit, but we use this stitching all to just poke through, give it a little twist. That just opens that hole up just enough to get that lace back through easily. You don't wanna completely waller that hole out. You still want it to be somewhat tight around that lace. You just wanna open it up just enough to where that lace can come back through. And so now we come back through with our lace again. On the back side, grab it. As you can see, that point goes through fairly easy. And then you just weave your second little strand. Make sure you don't get caught up down here. Pull that through. And now, a little tip, you wanna make sure that as you're weaving in and out of these holes that you're keeping the main part of the lace, the front side, showing. I guess you could say the glossier, shiny side, the finished side showing on the front and the back. You don't wanna start twisting and turning it to where you got the finished side on the top and then on the back side, it's the flesh side. You want it to be finished side on front and back. So just make sure that you keep that straight as you go along. And now from here, we're gonna just keep opening our holes up, running this lace down through there, and I'll get you a better video of that right now. Now, sometimes you can take this all and just go ahead and open up a few holes down the line, just to save you a little bit of time. You wanna be careful, like I said, to not get too crazy. <clears throat> There's different types of awls you can use to do this. I just like this small stitching awl because as you can see, these holes are pretty close to the edge edge if you get something too big in there and start turning it around you could potentially i've heard stories where people have busted that all out of the side of the edge and so the leather is completely blown out right there you do not want that to happen okay i've got this going a little bit what i like to do personally is instead of working one hole at a time and pulling the entire strand of lace through that individual hole i like to go on runs like this because once you get going a little bit, you're not working with as much lace. So instead of sitting here and having to wind it all up, I can just grab it like this and be ready to go. So I feel like it makes it go by a little bit quicker. I don't really know if it actually does, but it feels like it does. So that's what I like to do. So I'll show you right now um, pretty much where I'm at and what I'm doing. So. Like I said, I'm sorry that I don't have a stitching horse or a stitching pony or anything like that. It would make this demonstration a lot easier. There's no particular reason why I don't have one. I've just never used one. I always, I guess, go at it the hard way. I just like to hold the belt in between my arm and my side like this and tackle it like that. A stitching horse or a stitching pony or any type of clamp system that you could come up with or buy would probably be easier and simpler, but this is just how I do it. It's just loop, swoop, and pull. It's pretty simple. It's just very time consuming. And now once you get to the point where you start to run out of lace to work with, now you can start pulling the rest of the lace 
through the loops and get caught up and then start this process over. So you go back up here to where you were. And this is where you're actually gonna pull the lace tight this time around. And always make sure that it's not getting twisted. That way it actually forms that nice tight diamond looking braided shape. It's probably hard to tell on the camera, but I'm pulling this, I'm not cinching it down crazy tight, but I like to pull it in there fairly tight. And that's definitely where this kangaroo lace, the strength of it comes into play because it's really, really hard to snap kangaroo lace. It's super tough. I'm pretty sure that kangaroo is actually some of the toughest leather on the planet. And so, it's a really nice leather to work with, especially when you're using it for these types of purposes. I'm gonna to try to get a little bit better view for you to see what I'm doing here. So I'm making this run towards me right now. So take my awl, open that hole up just a little bit. And now you see this leather, this lace comes through with the finish side on top. So I wanna make sure that that stays like that. And so you're just making a big circle almost, a big loop, going right back in that hole and pulling it to where, when you pull it tight, it's the finish side. So same thing, when you get to the back side, now it's on the bottom, the finish side. So you wanna make sure that you're flipping this over. Coming up like this and then going through and you pull it and the finish side will be shown on the back. So now we got this top side all the way worked down to the fold end of the belt and there's quite a bit of excess, but I'm just gonna leave that alone for now. And I'm gonna go ahead and start back at the top and make this other run on the way down. But as you can see, it's starting to take shape. It looks really good. Let's go ahead and get it finished. Okay, so if you were confused earlier about what I was talking about when I was mentioning how you finish the stitch and how you can hide certain parts on a belt. So this is what I was talking about. Um, as you can see here, I have one side of the lace on the front side of the belt and the other on the back. I want both pieces to end on the back side. That way it can be hidden and I don't have just a random strand up here on the front side, even though it will be technically on the back side of the belt still. But if you want both pieces to end up on the back side and you don't want to have to do what I'm about to do, then you want to make sure that you have an even number of holes. That way, when you get back, if you had an even number of holes, this one would be going down right here next instead of having to skip this one and go down, if that makes sense. So right now, because I want this to end on the back, I'm going to have to skip a hole and it doesn't really matter on a belt, honestly. It's not that big of an issue to skip this little area right here, but... Now when I pull it through, there's just gonna be a big lace right there, but it will never be seen because it's gonna be on the back side on the fold area. Um, but if you had an even number of holes, it would look normal and then it would still end up on the back side. But since I had an odd number of holes and I mean, I'm on a belt, I'm not gonna go through and count all of these holes to make sure because it isn't really that big of an issue, honestly. But now that we're on the end of the belt, we're gonna go ahead and tighten all this up and finish this off and then we should be good to go. I'm gonna to try to show this as best as I can. This is the front side of the belt. This is the back side of the belt. You want both strands on the back side. And if you had a piece of lace snap in the middle of the belt, this is pretty similar to how I would splice the lace if I had to do that as well. But I kinda of wanna crisscross these and you can tie a little knot here if you'd like. It's completely up to you. But then you take this one that's going this way 
Make sure that you leave a couple loops open back on each side and then bring it up through there. And just kind of pull it snug. And then I'm gonna do the same on this other side. Now you can go through and tighten these, and once you get them all tight, these laces, these extra pieces will be snug on the back side, and they're not ever gonna come out unless you just pick at them and mess with them. They should be down tight enough. You can probably get away with just putting it through one loop, but I go ahead and put them through two just to be safe. But this is typically how I end them off. I'll go ahead and pull them snug and show you what it looks like. I'm just slowly working them. I don't want to just cinch this last one down tight. Just kind of work a little at a time and give yourself some room. That way you can still pull the rest of it through and it's not just locked down. But once you get it pretty tight like that, then you can go ahead and come back through here and suck it down tight. Same on this one. You can pull, pull those tight, just like that. And then here in a minute, when we go back through and hammer these, they should lay flat. And also, this is optional, but this is what I like to do. I'm going to go ahead and snip these. Let's see how much. Had a little bit of excess, but that's perfectly fine. I'd rather have more than I need than not enough. But we're going to go ahead and snip these off and leave a little bit of a tail. Because another way to ensure that this does not ever come out is I'm going to take a little bit of my contact cement and glue that lace down like this. The little tails glue that down to the leather itself, the belt. And that'll also make sure that it doesn't ever come unwound. Okay, so I just have a little paintbrush right here that I'm gonna use to get some contact cement on. I'm just gonna drop a little bit down right here. It doesn't have to be anything crazy. And then put it on the lace too. It doesn't have to be much to hold this down. Same with this one. Just enough. We'll let that set up, stick the lace down, and there should never be any issues with it. All right, guys, we're pretty much finished with this lace. The last thing that I like to make sure to do is to go back through here with the flathead hammer and just gently tap this lace down flat. And you're gonna wanna do that all throughout the belt. Nothing crazy, just tap that lace down flat. That'll help it suck down in that hole and set better. And it kind of spreads it out and really shows that diamond effect a little bit more as well. I'm also doing this on my granite block just to have a little bit more of a sturdy surface and to help the backside lay down flat too. All right, here's the finished product. It came out really nice. I personally love the way Buckstitch looks. I actually wear a buckstitched belt. 
And up here, where we did our little splice thing, there's no issues. It doesn't pucker out or anything. It lays flat, so no issues there. One other thing you can do, which I always do, is I go through and I use tan coat as a top coat finish. And you can go through and put another coat on that and it'll make those laces look really shiny and it'll clean up any other dirty parts. But you wanna be careful, you don't wanna to get too crazy and start pulling antique out because that lace will get dirty pretty quick too, especially this white color. All right guys, that's gonna wrap this video up. I think I covered everything as best as I could. I'm really sorry if I overcomplicated a really simple process. I just tried to give you all the information that I could and help you out as best as I can. If you like this video, please make sure that you like and subscribe to the channel. I'm going to be posting a lot more content like this in the future whenever I get the chance to. Um, and if you haven't already, make sure that you follow me on Instagram at Gertie Leather Co. I post a lot more pictures of my finished goods like this on there. And it's a good way to keep up with me as far as what we're doing with uh, orders, what we got going on in the shop, other things like that. If you have any questions, please make sure that you drop that in the comments section or you can feel free to email me or message me on Instagram or whatever. I'll try to get back with you on any questions as soon as I can. Uh, if you have any ideas for future videos or any content that you'd like to see or like me to make, then feel free to drop that in the comments section or send me a message on that as well. But that's about it for now. If you guys have any extra tips or anything like that, go ahead and share that information too. I'm always willing to learn more. I'm not going to sit here and proclaim that I know everything. Um, but thanks for watching. I really appreciate you guys. Again, please make sure that you like and subscribe to the channel. And until next time, we'll see you.